Okay, good morning. <clears throat> this video is for my friend Kato Aoki-san over in uh, King Henry VI. Uh, he was asking about the buffer relay that I've been using between amplifiers of the old style and modern HF transceivers. And so what I thought I'd do is put a quick video together to show you how to do that, uh, Kato-san, and also for others who may have an interest to follow along. This is Joe, K9 United Radio, and uh, stand by for our video. Okay, this is a keying module. I bought this module from eBay or Amazon. Uh, these particular modules are a single relay. Uh, this particular unit is a 12 volt. They also make a five volt version. It doesn't really matter which voltage version you buy in terms of functionality. The only difference is one requires 12 volts or something similar, and the other requires five volts. What I want to do is I want to orient you briefly to this product. So what you'll see on the, um, on, on the right side, as you're looking at the screen, the right side is what I call the output. And the output side has three terminals. There is a normally open, a center or a ground common, and a normally closed terminal. And depending on the kind of relay keying that you have, you would either connect you would connect the ground wire to the center, of course, and the white wire that you see there connected either to normally open or normally closed, depending on what kind of trigger mechanism you have. In this example here, uh, as I zoom in, you'll see, and on the circuit board, it's written NC for normally closed, COM for common, and NO for normally open. And in my configuration, I'm using a normally open and of course, when you close something, that would cause a related trigger. And so I've got two wires connected, and those two wires go to an RCA connector that is connected on the back of the amplifier. It's just an RCA connector. You can buy one of those cables for a dollar or two and cut the cable in half. You'll use half of the cable from here, the relay, to the back of the amplifier. The other side of the relay is also a three-wire connector. Uh, we have a DC plus, a DC minus common, and then an input signal. <clears throat> now, your transceiver, your radio, will connect to the input and the common. <clears throat> okay, that's the other half of the RCA cable. Those will go to the back of the ICOM 7610, in this case, Katosan. And that will plug into the amplifier relay RCA jack that's on the back of the ICOM 7610. Now, what you've basically done is you've got an RCA cable that connects and in the middle is the relay. Now, of course, the last thing you need to do is you need to supply power to the relay. And that's where I have the black and the red wires. The red wire goes to DC in and the black wire goes to the same location where the shield of the cable go. It's a common ground, so you can connect both of those together. What I've done on this particular module, I'm cheating, I'm using a 9-volt battery. And so I've attached a 9-volt battery terminal because I wanted to do something portable. I didn't want to drag my power supply, and this relay will operate off of 9 volts without too much problem. And so what I've done... I've just soldered the battery connector onto the back side of the circuit board, but you don't have to do that. You could use the screw terminals. I just find sometimes the screw terminals are a little bit harder to work with. Okay, stand by for just a minute, and I'll show you what this looks like when it's powered on. Okay, now we're ready to go. You should have a green light. Your radio is powered up. Your relay is powered up. Again, I'm running it off a 9-volt battery just temporarily to show you. Normally, you would you connect those uh, connectors to the power supply of your station. Okay. And now I'm keying the radio. I'm keying the radio, and what that's doing is it's causing the radio to close the relay and to begin that, uh, keying the amplifier. Now, you'll notice this particular module says high or low level trigger. What does that mean? Well, that means on the input side, in the ICOM, the uh, signal closes to ground. Okay, the signal closes to ground. But if you had a situation where you had a radio where it was 
always grounded and it opened the circuit, what you can do is you could move this jumper, that's a jumper pad, you can move that onto the other, um, let's see, the way it's configured now is only two are shorted. And uh, so what you would wanna do is you would move the jumper to the left and then what would happen is the relay would trigger when the circuit is open as opposed to when the circuit is closed. So that's just something out of the box. If you receive it and the, uh, you know, depending how the jumper is set, the relay might behave differently than you expect. So make sure you move that, re move that jumper pin around. Okay, so the practical use case for these things is tremendous. Um, you could use this to control an amplifier between the radio and the transmitter. They sell multiple relay modules and you could control something like an on the air light. If you wanna have an on the air light turn on when you're transmitting, you could control preamplifiers. You could control other rotor controls or mast mounted controls all through this relay circuit. Uh, it's pretty handy, um, and so uh, something to add to your ham shack arsenal. The cost of these things is just a couple bucks, and again, you can buy them on uh, eBay, or Amazon, or AliExpress, or any of the online retailers. Okay, I hope this was helpful. This is K9UR Joe in Indiana, wishing you 73, and have a great day.